Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is Nosler's 165 grain Acubon long range, 0.277 diameter, which we've got loaded up in our 270 win short mag. We'll be running it from 100 to 500 yards in our Winchester Model 70, and this is the first time that we featured the Acubon long range here on the channel. This is of course a bonded core bullet, and it's designed to be a longer range version of Nosler's much loved Acubomb. Anyway, we're very excited to see how it performs, and we sure y'all are as well. So let's get started. Nosler describes the Acubond Long Range as being developed in response to the escalating demand from long range hunters who are asking for a hunting bullet that could keep up with today's level of high grade optics and ultra high velocity cartridges in order to stretch practical shooting distances. As such, the ABLR was designed to have an optimum performance window of 3200 down to 1300 feet per second. In today's test, we don't come close to either the top or low end of that range, although we did get a smattering of great results from this premium premium bonded bullet. I've been a big fan of Nosler's Acubond for a long time and this is the first time we've featured the long range version. Now you will notice that we chose to test the 165 grain offering in this diameter instead of a more common lighter option like the 150. We wanted to test the upper end of how heavy a projectile the 270 Wisdom could accommodate and it actually turned out to be a little bit challenging sourcing good load data for a 165 in this cartridge. Nevertheless, not knowing what to expect, we headed out to the range and the results speak for for themselves. Before we get into the close-ups and graphs, I do want to mention that it usually takes us in between 20 to 25 rounds to perform one of these tests. With this bullet, we only used up 15 rounds, which is the lowest amount we've ever needed. The accuracy was phenomenal, which I've come to expect from this cartridge in this rifle, and which I'd hope I'd get out of a bullet with a 0.620 ballistic coefficient. At 100 yards, the bullet peeled back onto itself, below the base of the projectile. At 200, we have very similar results to the 100, 
absolutely fantastic expansion. At 300, we begin to see expansion ending just proud at the base, and with that high BC, we're not losing all that much velocity due to this bullet's excellent drag characteristics. Like the 2 to the 1, at 400, we get results mimicking the 300 as we drop about another 140 feet per second. And the 500 rounds us out with incredible consistency. Visually, the recovered projectile closely imitates those which were recovered at pretty much all the previous ranges. But will this consistency be borne out in numbers? Let's take a look at our graphs to find out. Expansion is pretty good. Starting off at the 100, we have 1.78 times original size, and as we slow down at the 500, that climbs to 1.99 times original size, giving us an average overall expansion of 1.85. Now, these numbers are very good, but those of you who've seen our video on the 140 grain Acubond and the 270 Wisdom may recall the numbers being much higher. And this is true. The 140 Acubond had expansion at the 100 of over 2.7 and average expansion of 2.36 times original size, which is surprising considering the velocities of both projectiles were pretty comparable. When we tested the 140, we were running a load we developed on a slower and more temperature stable powder that we had worked up for accuracy rather than trying to achieve as high a velocity as we could. With this 165, we used a pretty stout charge of accurate mag pro and were able to put up very similar velocity figures to the 140. And like I mentioned previously, this load turned out to be very accurate, although considering mag pro's temperature sensitivity, I'm not sure I'd use it for the long range hunting application this bullet is designed for. But why did the plain Jane Acubond put up numbers which quantitatively outclassed the long range version? Well, to answer that question, we need to look at weight retention. The 140 grain Acubond lost just over 25% of its weight on average across all ranges fired. The 165 Acubond long range with a similar muzzle velocity lost on average just shy of 48% of its weight across all ranges fired. We need to remember that with the long range's higher weight, it carries a higher BC, meaning less drag, which translates to higher impact velocities at the further ranges. So the long range with comparable velocity figures loses significantly more weight. In my opinion, this is due to a couple of factors. Looking at the cross-sectional images of both bullets provided by Nosler, we see that there are some slight differences between the two. They seem to have a slightly different taper in how the jacket surrounds the core, but the biggest difference is in the cavity which meets the tip. On the long range, this chamber is much deeper, allowing the projectile to open up on itself more readily. Combine this with what I would guess is a softer alloy than what's used in the Acubond, we have a bullet which peels back to past the base consistently, which we witnessed in our impact images, but which suffers at closer ranges in that it does its job so well. Expansion doesn't get slowed down at all, which keeps the process from stopping earlier, meaning the bullet doesn't end up being as wide. At 100 yards, it expanded so well that it lost over 50% of its weight, which is a direct effect of a thinner wall around the hollow chamber near the tip and a softer alloy. Now, our impact velocity at 100 yards was just over 2,800 feet per second, and Nosler states this bullet achieves optimal performance with a top end velocity of 3200 feet per second. I'm really interested to see what happens when we push the Acubond long range to an impact velocity of 3200, which rest assured we will do in a future video. Nosler states the bottom end of the performance range is 1300, which we'll also get to in a future video. But my prediction is that it will perform excellently at that low speed. So while we haven't tested this assumption here, it is my belief that considering how easy this bullet opens up and the relatively high ballistic coefficient, it would be a top notch option for any hunter who plans on hunting at extended ranges. That being said, I don't think the Acubon Long Range is a bullet for general purpose use. Rather, it is a tool which excels in that specialized extended range application. If I know that on a given hunt, I wouldn't take shots past 400, I would select the regular Acubon instead as I'd like to maximize my retained weight and overall expansion. But as a long range or extreme long range hunting projectile, a heavy four caliber Acubon Long Range provides the distance hunter several benefits. High BC, which which would help with wind drift, velocity retention, and accuracy. Any modern design comprised of what I would call chemical and mechanical advantages, which should allow this bullet to prove lethally effective nearly any distance considered ethical. We're looking forward to testing this bullet more in a variety of other cartridges in the future, and we hope you are as well. Make sure you don't miss those videos and others. Consider helping us out with a thumbs up, and if you aren't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.